Hello and welcome to the History of Transformers Soundwave Edition. Soundwave is one of Megatron's most reliable troops and he has positioned himself comfortably and irreplaceably in Megatron's upper command structure. He stands at the Decepticon leader's side as a confidant. Though only communications officer, he is comparable to Sarscream and Shockwave in rank and is the only one of the three to display consistent loyalty to Megatron. Soundwave is usually wise to Starscream's devious plots and reports them to Megatron quickly. Soundwave guards his place in the hierarchy fiercely. Soundwave commands a legion of cassette troops to carry out tasks big and small. He has a symbolic relationship with them, providing them transportation and a cheap if crammed place to live inside his chest. In return, they perform spy and recon missions and make sure no one calls him uncharismatic. Soundwave served as an intelligence officer during the war on Cybertron. He had a questionably useful alt mode of a space age lamp post, which allowed him to get close to the Autobot headquarters as the street leading to Iacon. There he deployed his chest dwelling minion Laserbeak who would snoop even closer. Laserbeak overheard talk of the Autobot mission to seek new energy sources off Cybertron, which prompted the Decepticons to intercept and board the Ark. During the flight aboard the Ark, Soundwave easily fought off Jazz, Prowl, and Sideswipe, only to be kicked in the back by Ironhide. He then somehow got up again to be punched in the chest by Ratchet, whom he threw against a console. However, this battle was cut short when the gravity of the primitive planet forced both ships to crash land. Four million years later, in the Earth year of 1984, the Transformers awakened and Soundwave was reformatted into a portable cassette player. He played an essential role in the generation of Energon cubes and the formation of plans for a new space cruiser to return the Decepticons to Cybertron. Soundwave's cassette player mode also allowed him to dupe a grabby and none too questioningly spike with wiki into carrying his shrunken form into Autobot headquarters, where he was able to deploy Ravage and record information on the Earth's most plentiful resources. Though Ravage was captured, Soundwave escaped to report to Megatron. After Ravage returned, after being allowed to escape, Soundwave proved his loyalty to Megatron by warning his leader of Starscream's foolish attempt to take his life. During the subsequent battle at the launch of the space cruiser, Soundwave deployed several tapes in Operation Warfare. Soundwave served as the helmsman for the space cruiser on its remarkably short flight from Earth and alerted the others to Mirage's intrusion. After the Decepticons established an undersea headquarters, Soundwave fooled the workers of a solar power plant into thinking he was a worker's tape player, even though he wasn't which begged the question of how he managed to get inside in the first place. After Megatron was seemingly destroyed, he chafed under the command of Starscream, whose inept leadership he was forced to endure. Their first sortie ended in a comical defeat that saw Soundwave bowled over by Prowl as he ran away. When Megatron eventually returned in a scheme to steal Dr. Alcazar's antimatter formula, Soundwave happily latched back onto his master. After Alcazar deleted the formula from his own computer, Soundwave used his mind-reading talents to acquire the formula from the brain of Chip Chase. One of Soundwave's most notable misadventures came in 1985, when, operating a plan conceived by Starscream, he brainwashed humans with an ultrasonic vibrations inside the Decepticon-built nightclub in New York City leading to a confrontation with his Autobot communications officer counterpart, Blaster. This became a lasting rivalry between the two. In the year 2005, the Autobots had been driven from Cybertron and were now based on their home worlds, moons, and on Earth. After scouting from Laserbeak, Megatron constructed a scheme to strike at the heart of the Autobots' strength by sacking their great fortress of Autobot City. During the subsequent battles, Soundwave deployed an array of his cassettes against Autobot's communications array manned by Blaster. Little did he know, Blaster had since gathered a group of cassettes of his own, and in any case, Soundwave's minions failed to stop the distress signal. 
Soundwave's loyalty to Megatron was demonstrated when he recovered the seriously damaged Decepticon leader, who had been left for dead after Optimus Prime defeated him. But while Soundwave was loyal, he was far from stupid, and he kept his mouth closed when Megatron was subsequently ejected into space. Although he did suggest himself as a replacement leader, he again loyally served Megatron when he returned as Galvatron. In the year 2006, although operating in a less prominent capacity for most of the time, Soundwave played a prominent role in Galvatron's attempt to learn the secret of the sonic weapon on the planet Ethrma, where sound and music were the way of life, leaving Soundwave entranced by the planet's perfect melodies, recording each piece of the harmony that formed a devastating sonic attack. Soundwave was defeated when the Euthamerans continued the harmony with white noise, and he was again pulled into a confrontation with Blaster, who erased his recordings. Background information. Including the Microchange Cassette Man version, the original Soundwave mold sported at least four different tape doors. The original MC-10 version had a cassette door that had Cassette Man embroidered on it, and featured a hinge that was internal to the robot's body. For the initial Transformers release by Hasbro, the Cassette Man text was removed. When Takara's Soundwave was released, the hinge was remolded so that the bottom of the door attached to the outside of the robot on either side of the buttons, which had also been remolded. The Sound Blaster version had a door that retained the external hinge and added a capacity for holding a second cassette. Soundwave's distinctive voice proved to be one of Generation 1's most memorable aspects. The highly processed voice began with Frank Welker basically doing his Dr. Claw voice from Inspector Gadget. Whether due to the vibrations in the performance or the processing, the final result varied quite a bit across Soundwave's three seasons on the show. Occasionally, in the episodes Roll For It and Web World, the processing was left out and Welker's actual voice can be heard. If you look closely, Soundwave's head resembles the Decepticon insignia, while the Autobot insignia resembles Prowl's, possibly indicating that they might have been considered the leaders of their factions early in the Transformers development process. Thank you for watching the history of Soundwave. Don't forget to leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe if you can. If you already have, then thank you. We got new episodes coming out every Saturday at 6 o'clock a.m. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.